95% of job postings for entry-level tech jobs want more than 3 years of experience. As nonsensical as this might seem, there are some interesting reasons why this is happening. And today I'm going to look into this trend and the reasons behind why companies are wanting more and more from you. We're going to look at why companies create job postings like this, we're going to look at the job market dynamics and I'm going to offer my perspective on what you can do in order to maximize your chances of success in this field. Now, why do companies create entry-level job postings that need more than 3 years of experience? To be fair, many companies did this for many years before, but they were like maybe 10 or 20% of the total market. And it was easy to spot their unrealistic expectations because often they didn't really fill those roles for months. It was clear that they didn't really need to hire because they could afford to wait months or even a year to fill a position. But since it was a small part of a fast-growing market, nobody actually paid attention. But in the last years though, Things have changed, as tech went from a dream job to tech being dead in actually less than 5 years. On paper they're actually looking for a developer, but in practice they're just sports fishing. Interviewing so that they appear to be hiring and that they show that they're doing well in the recession, but they're just window shopping. But why are they window shopping and only accepting very experienced engineers? They're doing this because they really need to get well positioned for this major tech transformation that is happening. Because their clients are buying less and less and deals are harder to close. Because everybody is shook by the productivity gains that AI will bring. And if we couple that with the recession, then it's obvious that the balance actually tilts towards a decline in the tech job market. Now let's unpack this for a bit so we see exactly why the tech job market is declining. We have an ever-growing number of people with CS degrees or fresh out of boot camps. Many barely know how to solve problems and they lack the passion for programming and they lack the drive to get better. Many are just looking to get into tech and they want to do the least that they can in order to get in. YouTube, Reddit and pretty much social media in general told everybody that they can make it if they just get into tech. And at the same time, we have a demand decline because companies need less and less developers. And they're going to need less and less developers in the next years. And I know tech is growing, right? And I know that it will continue to grow. I'm not debating that. But the tech job market will decline because the productivity gains brought by AI will make sure that more gets done with less people. So no wonder that companies are asking for more than 3 years of experience. Another reason why they're doing this is because they need to filter out those thousands of applications for each job posting. They need to filter out so much in order to get to that small 0.5% that might be usable as an employee. So why do we get so many applications for jobs? Because for some reason in the last couple of years this number has skyrocketed. And don't tell me it's because of the mass layoffs, it was going up even before. One of the reasons is that people started thinking that it's just a numbers game. And once you believe this, then any job is attainable in your mind. Because that is not about your skills, but it's about finding the company that is willing to give you a chance. So 95% of those candidates are completely unprepared for the role, but they think that they are because society told them that anybody can do this. Let's take a job posting for let's say a data scientist. You get maybe 3-5% to that are interviewable. And this is simplified here, but you get the idea we have a lot of bloat. So people are applying and spamming every job ad and they're trying to brute force themselves into a job. And that's an interesting dynamic that we ended up having, but companies are reacting immediately by making their already ridiculous job descriptions even more ridiculous, to try and filter out candidates faster. So we get to a point where it's just a continuous escalation from both sides. We get candidates with shallow knowledge that are trying to get interviews and then we get companies that are trying to get the best candidates for the least amount of money that they can. And this is the dynamic that makes the tech industry one of the worst industries to try and get into right now. Brute forcing yourself into tech worked in a bull market, right? Because companies were hiring left and right. They didn't really care about qualifications, they didn't really care about experience, they cared about showing that they're growing. Plus they got tax benefits on R&D. So much of those salaries that they were paying, they were discounted by the tax benefits that they had. But now, both the legislation has changed and the goals are different. There's no reason to pump up their numbers because now they don't get any benefits from a bigger tech department. It's actually the opposite right now. The market now rewards them if they're laying off people because the goal now is to show productivity gains per employee. Not artificial growth, but productivity gains per employee. So now they really need less people. It's just simple as that. They just need less and less people. Now let's look at the demand for tech professionals. This might increase at some point, but the nature of available positions will definitely change. And by then we might still be in a surplus of developers. Not a surplus of good developers, but a surplus of candidates. The job market dynamics have changed. 
the number of job seekers. Good and bad job seekers actually exceeds the available positions and it exceeds the number of available positions by a lot. And this trend is amplified by the recession and it makes it most likely that it will take years until the market will actually absorb all of these people, if ever, right? Because every year we get more and more people looking to get into tech. And by default, the good candidates will be absorbed first. That's why the experience requirement, leaving less experienced people in kind of a limbo, right? They're kind of waiting for the market to come back. But I really hope that it does, right? But I think it's going to take years. And I'm thinking more like 2025 or 2026 for the market to come back for entry level positions. Now, companies care about productivity more than ever. If some years ago it was just about showing growth by numbers, now they want to show productivity gains per employee. And think about it. Because tech productivity has been incredibly low for years and the recession actually showed that companies were bloated with unproductive engineers. So now it looks good for them when they run with smaller development teams. Productivity will be still low, but the layoffs will signal the fact that they're doing something about it. And since the market is always forward looking, they're pricing potential gains in the future. So if you're at the beginning of your tech career, unfortunately it's not the most optimal time to get in. It can be your skills, it can be that maybe you just need to be given a chance. But the best thing that you can do right now is to try and figure out where there's a shortage in candidates and try to pivot into a more narrow niche. Because if you have the same skills as the majority of juniors out there, then it's going to be a hard battle. So you need to break away from the overcrowded technologies and try to set yourself apart. I still think there are multiple opportunities out there and one of them is cloud engineering. Not big enough for all the entry level candidates, but something that will grow in the next years. That's why I created Get That Badge, a learning platform that helps you prepare for cloud certification exams. It's currently in beta and we offer both practice exams and a assistance to help you learn faster. Check it out as I'd love your feedback because our goal is to help you achieve your goals. So therefore every feedback is good feedback. Check it out, getthatbadge.com. In previous videos, I talked about a couple of niches that I believe are going to be good in the next couple of years. And definitely cloud engineering is one of them. And in the next videos, I want to cover some skills that you definitely need for the future. Until then, what are you learning right now? What are your thoughts on the market? And what niches are you looking at? <laughs>